In this video, I'm going to be working out two examples of completing the square. Now, basically for completing the square, this is usually done like in a first introduced like in an Algebra 2 class, uh, carried on maybe into a pre -comp class as well. But just to brush up on what the purpose of completing the square really is all about. All right, let's say we've got a quadratic equation here, and it says to solve it. So it's set equal to zero, it's a quadratic equation, we need to solve it. There's lots of different ways we can solve it. We could solve it by factoring, which would probably be the easiest if it can factor. We could use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. You can also put the uh, quadratic equation, or this quadratic equation, into a graphing calculator and then check to see where the zeros of the function are. You know, does it cross the x-axis at one spot or two spots or not at all? All right, so there's lots of different options that we could do. Uh, completing the square is yet, yes, another option of what we can do. Now, uh, basically, it's called completing the square because what you're going to be doing here is um, you are going to actually create a perfect square trinomial on the left-hand side, which factors really, really nicely, obviously, because it's a perfect square trinomial, and then that's going to allow us to solve the equation rather simply. Um, now, I would like to point out a little hint here. The coefficient of the x squared term must be a 1 for you to be able to complete the square here. So, in this first example, I've got a leading coefficient of 1. In my second example, I'll show you um, how to handle it when you have um, some number other than 1 right there. All right, so uh, for starters here, if I am going to complete the square on this uh, quadratic right here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 4 over to the right-hand side, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. All right, and then I'm also going to set it up. I always set it up on my paper, leaving two blanks for where I'm going to actually complete the square. All right, so on this left-hand side, I would have an x squared minus 6x, and then I would draw myself a blank because I know I've got to fill something in right there, equals, now I said we were going to subtract 4 from both sides, so I'm going to have a negative 4 on my right-hand side, and then if I add something to the left-hand side, I also have to add it to the right-hand side, so I'm going to add myself a little blank line over here. This helps me to remember that I need to add a number to both of those spots. All right, now that perfect square trinomial, that's what we're going to do right here. We need to create a perfect square trinomial right here so that this will factor nicely. Now, the way we're going to do that, we're going to take the b coefficient. We're going to take half of it and then square it. All right, so basically, here, let's see if we can write it over here. We're going to do half of b lowercase if this was, you know, a, a x squared plus b x plus c. We're going to do half of b and then square it, okay? So, one half of six, one half of six is just three, three squared is nine. All right, so that's how I'm going to choose what I'm going to put in each one of those blanks. So then I'm going to do plus 9, and I'm going to do plus 9. Okay, so at that point, I have completed the square. All right, now on this side right here, I'm just going to factor this. This is going to be a perfect square trinomial, so I know with this being a minus sign right here that this is going to factor into an x minus 3 and an x minus 3, but I'm going to choose to write it x minus 3 squared. All right, and then equals, I'm going to go ahead and add over here, negative 4 plus 9, that's going to give me a 5. Okay, now we want it written like this, because at this point, if I'm trying to solve this equation, I've got a quantity squared, so I can take the square root of both sides um, very nicely right here. So I can take the square root of this side, and I can do plus or minus the square root of this side over here. So my square root and my square is going to go away on this side, so I'll have x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. All right, and now I can just add 3 to both sides of the equation, and then I'm done. So x equals 3 plus or minus square root of 5. Okay, two possible answers there. If you would need to convert to a decimal, you could, and you'd have your two separate answers there. Okay, but just a nice little straightforward example of completing the square when that leading coefficient is 1. But the basic setup every time is going to remain the same. I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial right here. Whatever I add here to create that perfect square trinomial, I also have to add on the right-hand side of the equation. So that's why I set those two blank lines up. All right, so for a 
another example. All right, this time we're going to be looking at something that does not have a 1 coefficient. I've got a 9 coefficient there instead. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I've got to get rid of that 9 because I have to have a 1 there. So I'm going to divide through by 9 and I'm going to reduce fractions. All right, so let's re uh, write that out here. So divide through by 9 and reduce fractions, right? So it, chances are that's going to create fractions, so you're going to want to reduce those fractions. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 9, divide by 9, divide by 9, and divide by 9. And I do it everywhere, even on the right-hand side, that equal sign. So I do it in all locations. All right, 9 divided by 9, that's just going to go to 1. All right, the 6 ninths, that's what I'm talking about, reduce the fractions. That's going to reduce to 2 thirds. All right, and 4 ninths does not reduce. And 0 divided by 9 is just going to leave us with a 0 on that side. So then, after I've divided through by 9, my new equation is x squared minus, don't forget to reduce, 2 thirds x minus 4 ninths equals 0. Okay, now I'm going to begin my completing the square. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this extra term right here and I'm going to move it over to the other side. So I'm going to add four nights to both sides. I'm going to set this next line up so that I've got the two blank spaces that I know I'm going to need. Okay, so I'll have an x squared minus a two-thirds x and then I know I need to add something right there equals Put the 4 ninths on the other side of the equation, so I'm going to add 4 ninths to both sides. And remember to put a blank line on this side because if you add something to the left, I also have to add it to the right. Okay, now let's figure out what this number's got to be here. I need half of my b coefficient and I need to square it. Okay, so half of 2 thirds. All right, I'm going to square it. Of means to multiply, so basically one-half times two-thirds. All right, and I can cross out those twos right there, which is going to give me a one-third. And then one-third squared. Square the top number, square the bottom third number, so one-ninth. So I've got a one-ninth that I've got to add in both spots. So I'm going to do plus one-ninth, and I'm going to do plus one-ninth. Okay, now this is a perfect square trinomial. All right, may not look like it, but it is that two-thirds and one-ninth because of doing this process over here, I was guaranteed to get a perfect square trinomial. All right, now, on the other one, it was easy to factor. On this one, might not be as easy to factor, but with that, that leading term right there, minus, you know it's going to be x minus something squared. All right, this right here always turns out to be half of that two-thirds. So when I went one-half of two-thirds right there and I got my one-third, all right, the one-third is what's going to go right here, all right, because it's always half of that. And let's add that in another color, all right, because when it's a whole number, not too bad. It's easy to factor, but as soon as you start getting fractions in there, it gets a little more difficult. So let's just write half in there. That way you'll remember where that one-third came from. Okay, all right, now, um, so I factored this. It factors to the x minus one-third quantity squared equals, I need to add one-fourth, or uh, four-ninths, rather, and one-ninth. That's going to give me five-ninths. All right, now, we're down to an equation now that I can take square root of both sides and easily um, solve from here on out. So if I take square root of the left-hand side, I will be left with the x minus one-third. And when I do the square root on the right-hand side, I need to do plus or minus the square root of 5 over 9. Okay, now, this, um, here, let's, so I don't have to do lots of lines here. Let's do a little bit of work over here. All right, plus or minus that square root of 5 over square root of 9. I can break it up into two smaller radicals, square root of 5 over square root of 9. And then I can simplify that even farther, square root of 5 over 3. Okay, so just doing a little square scratch work over there to simplify this expression right here. So then I've got x minus one-third equals plus or minus square root of five over three, and I can add one-third to both sides of the equation. So x is equal to a one-third plus or minus square root of five over three.
All right, you can leave your answer like that. Um, a lot of times since they've already got a denominator, both of them have a denominator of three. I've also seen it commonly written as one plus or minus the square root of five all over three, depending on um, what your teacher, what form your teacher might want it in. Either one of those would work. All right, but just um, a second example here of completing the square and completing the square with a leading coefficient that's not one, all right? And sometimes, yes, you can end up with some fractions in there, but um, the completing the square to form that perfect square trinomial just allows you to factor down to a quantity squared every time, which then makes solving the equation from here to the end really, really simple. Um, so definitely, thanks for watching. I hope um, this kind of cleared up the completing the square method for solving a quadratic. Definitely, thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.